everyone. This is Russ in IOLINE Customer Service. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create a kiss cut using CorelDRAW uh, and then going into the 301 software to create which layers I want to cut and then finally to cut it on the IOLINE 300 cutter. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is open Corel. And I'm just going to type out a quick word here, just in the basic font style. Uh, just type out the word IOLINE. Obviously, this is going to be your artwork, um, maybe text, it might be graphics. Um, today, I'm just going to do something real simple here. So we'll resize it, and then we will go into enhanced mode so I can see if there's any fills or anything on the uh, artwork, which there is. Okay, I'm going to zoom in so I can tell you know, how the layers look and all that when I'm done. Okay, so select it, and then over here, you want to click on the Interactive Contour tool. And then we're going to give it two layers, which puts two more outlines on it, and then adjust the size comparatively to the original text. So it looks like a decent kiss cut. All right, once we do that, uh, we have to be able to select each layer individually. So I need to go to Arrange, Break Contour Group Apart. This actually breaks apart the black from the blue and the gray. Now the blue and the gray are still attached, so we're going to ungroup those. So click on Group All. Now I can click on each individual color by itself. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to remove the fill, because the fill is not a good thing for 301. It gets confused. So left click in the little box there, and then right click on a color. That'll give it the colored outline that we want. And since I can click on each layer individually, now I'm going to click on each individual layer and give it a different colored outline. So I'm going to go blue on the outside, green on the inside, and red on the on the in inside. All right. So I'm going to zoom out to the page here, and I'm going to move, select everything, and move it down to the bottom left corner of my page because this represents your start point in on the 300 cutter. Okay, we'll zoom back in so we can see it. And then simply, uh, we want to make sure that everything is selected because you want to export all the layers together. So just draw a box around it with your pick tool, and then go to File, Export. Now this is the, this is the box where you change the name, you tell it what kind of file it is, and you put it in a place where you can find it again. So this is the most important part. Remember where you put this file. And make sure selected only is checked, and that you've got PLT as the file type. All right. Once you hit export, you're going to get a third box, a second box that opens. And the only thing to make sure of is it says bottom left, and that under advanced, none of these are checked. This says none, and your curve resolution says 0.0. .0. And then hit OK. Okay, now we're going to go into the 301 software. So we'll double click on the 301 icon. And that'll open the software. Might take a second. All right. And I've already got this set up in the same folder. So here's my file. So I double click on it and I get my three layers that I just created. So what you have to do is tell it which layer to start on first on the machine. And you can see by unchecking and checking you can tell in the view which layer is which. So what we want to do is start at the bottom and work our way up. So we're going to start with the bottom layer. Hit OK and we'll see just the bottom layer. Alright, so now it's time to set up the machine. So we'll put the blade in first. Uh, the blade, of course, just push it in there. Uh, don't use metal or any kind of a surface to push that blade in. Just use your fingers and then make sure the blade rotates properly with your finger. And then put the cap on, but don't tighten the cap. That's the important part. You want this cap to be on just enough to cut through one layer of twill at a time. 
So what we'll do is adjust it so that there's just a little bit of blade sticking out of the cap. Okay. And then I'll just put some twill on the machine here. And just, you know, make sure this is nice and smooth. Uh, any air bubbles trapped underneath it are going to create a place on the cut that doesn't like to cut through. So make sure that your sheet is free of any debris under it. No air bubbles get under there. Uh, I use a burnisher tool to get make sure that all the, the uh, bubbles are out. Uh, and then turn the machine on. And what we're going to do first is a test cut on another piece of twill that's sitting on top of this first piece that I put down. And by doing this, we can tell if it's cutting through one layer at a time or if it's going to cut really deep through both. So once the machine is initialized, just pull the tray forward a little bit. And I've got a junk piece of twill here that I'm sticking to the bottom layer. And then uh, move it over to a place to make a nice test cut and hit the test cut button. And it'll do a little square with a circle and a pie pieces and it should cut out nicely. So upon trying to weed it the first time, it doesn't look like I've got enough blade sticking out because it didn't cut all the way through. So we'll adjust the blade a little bit more and it's just the cap on the blade holder. <clears throat> then I redo my test cut and as you can see, it looks pretty good. It's already come out by itself and each pie piece comes off one at a time without sticking to each other and you can see the impression of that cut in the background twill and even by lifting the twill up you can see that uh, it didn't cut all the way through so that's a that's a good test cut and that means we're set so let's pull the tray out and we'll go ahead and start and cut our first layer so get a set origin on the machine, and then in the 301 software, we'll hit send to cutter, and send. And this sends a job to the machine, and here we go, we're cutting out our bottom layer. Works pretty quickly. Okay, so once we get that first layer cut, what we're going to do is hit the start stop button to get a red light, pull the tray out, and put on your second piece of twill. Now this is pressure sensitive twill from Stalls. Uh, it's got this backing on it, you peel it, and it sticks to the previous piece that you put on there. Uh, in other situations you might have heat sensitive material, so you just have to heat press it to that as you go. Alright, now it's important to know that you have to hit the start stop button once you've got your second piece on there. If you hit set origin, it'll ruin the design. So back in the 301 software, we just need to switch our layers. So we turn off the bottom layer, and we turn on the middle layer. So this is the second layer that we're going to cut, and it looks a little smaller. And we simply say send to cutter. And the machine will cut out that layer on this piece of twill, because we've adjusted our cap on the blade holder, it physically cannot cut through the first layer that we cut. So it quickly cuts out this layer, and then we hit start stop, pull the tray out, and we put our third piece of twill. This is another piece of Stahl's thermal, uh, sorry, uh, pressure sensitive twill and just set that right on top, make sure it's you know in the right place and push it down, make sure there's no air bubbles hit start stop so that it goes back to its previous end point we go back into design setup in the 301 software and we turn on the top layer and turn off the middle layer so only the top layer is selected and then very simply hit send to cutter and because we had a start point already done on the first layer, each time you hit start stop, it will go back to its previous start point and remember where it was in space for every design, for every layer. If you hit set origin between those, it ruins the design and you won't be able to get it back. So we've got the top layer cut now. 
and we'll just simply hit start stop and pull the tray out so we can weed everything on there. And as you can see, it's cutting pretty nice. Just weed each layer as you go. Uh, sometimes things can stick to each other, so, you know, push them down if you have to. And then we'll do our third layer, or the first one that we cut. And that seems to come off very nicely. And then weed out all your individual holes, things like that, that uh, those are easier to pull out before you take it off the tray. And then all we have to do is slowly peel this up off the tray. Now I used a high tack sheet. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to pull the twill off of a high tack sheet when it's got a kiss cut like this. So you want to be kind of careful as you pull it off. It might make the other layers, you know, not registered with the other layers. I mean, it's kind of difficult sometimes, but uh, medium tack sheets work a little better for this. Uh, they don't last as long. But as you can see, we've got a nice kiss cut there. And uh, this would be very easy to create a sew file for and have it sewn down. And so that's what we're going to do next, is create some stitches for this file. So um, let's uh, start by going back into the 301 software. And uh, we've got our top layer visible here, so we're going to hit the Create Stitches window. And uh, we don't need a placement stitch for the top layer. Um, we don't even need a tack down. We'll just do a satin stitch, leave it with all the default settings for now. Uh, actually, maybe we'll change this to a smaller size because that top layer is a little small. So when you hit OK, you can see that we've got a satin stitch now on our top layer. We have to go back into Design Setup, and we'll turn on Layer 2. Turn off Layer 1, and we'll hit OK. And you'll see that now the satin stitch is on Layer 2. But we want to change that. So we go back into Create Stitches, put on a tack down stitch, and maybe a zigzag for this one. And we'll turn off the satin stitch and hit OK. And there we've got our tack down and zigzag. So now we go back into design setup, turn off or turn on layer three, turn off layer two, hit OK, and the same stitch will go on the third layer. So we'll go back into create stitches and we'll put a placement stitch on this bottom one because the bottom one is the only one that needs the placement. And now we have a placement, a tack down, and a zigzag on the bottom layer. So back in design setup, we can turn all three layers back on. And you can see, let me zoom in a little, that all three layers have a separate stitch on them. And so this is how you create that multiple uh, stitch kind of a deal with kiss cutting. Uh, now if we go back into Design Setup, we now need to tell it what order to stitch in. And this is your stitch order here. So an easier way to figure this out, or at least to, to keep it organized, is I'll change the names of these layers. Uh, the first one is Top. We'll do Middle for this middle one. And we'll do Bottom for the bottom one. Just so I know which, uh, which layers are which. And then if you go over to Stitch Order, we want the bottom layer to stitch first. So that's going to be a zero. And if you hit Tab, it automatically sets it up so that the next layer, middle, is one, and the top layer is two. So it's zero, one, and two. So we will start with the bottom, it'll go to the middle, and then it'll go to the top, and sew that out. When you hit OK, you can see uh, everything is ready to go. So we're going to save the file, and we'll just use Tajima because it's the most common. And really the only thing you have to worry about is a file name. And it will always copy or, or save that file to the same place where your PLT file is saved. Uh, go ahead and continue. We're going to overwrite an original one that I made earlier. And hit continue. And now it says that your file is saved. So we can actually look at that file now to see if it's saved all right. If we go back into the home screen, click on the Tajima DST button, and you'll see your Iolign DST there. 
that we just saved. We'll load the file and it opens up with layer 1. Now there's probably an extra layer here because one of the layers will be a stitch layer. Uh, but turn all the layers on and then if you zoom in on it just slightly you'll see that each layer has a separate stitch on it. So now the fun part of sewing it down.